Three tips for selling your assignments. The three most important thing you need to focus on when you are selling your assignments. Okay, friends, Yossi here, Toronto Real Estate Age Mortgage Broker. Today is another walk-in video. And I want to talk to you a bit about three things that are very, very important when it comes to selling your assignments. Now, a lot of people buck on those last few years, 15, 18, 20,000 per year. The last, you know, five, six years, close to 100,000 condos are out there. Um, you can assume that, you know, anything that was built, uh, bought, bought the last uh, three years in pre early pre-construction is still under construction. There's like, there's got to be like at least 50,000 condos under construction, probably more. So a lot of people that bought them are buying to flip, that I want to close, life situation change, whatever it is, and they need to sell them. So if you're going to go and sell your condo, um, of course, call me. I'm a real estate agent, and I'd love to help you sell your assignments, and I, I do that, and I love doing that. Nonetheless, I want to educate you and give you some tips on how to do it. So the three things that I focus on most when I talk to people calling me, you know, and every day someone's calling me, say, you'll see, I want to sell this assignment. My life situation has changed. I've moved. Somebody died. Uh, the whatever broke up you know life happens it's all good um, <clears throat> i'm going to tell you what the three things are and i'm going to go back and review each and every one of them and give you my best tips okay so the first thing of the three things you need to know you need to focus on the most when you sell your condo assignment is of course the price the second thing is the deposit and the third is the presentation now i'm going to go back and explain what i mean the price, obviously the price you want to get as a seller, you want to get as price as high as possible and the buyer as low as possible, which is also okay. That's the way of life. Um, but then again, how to price your condo is very, very crucial. If you price it too high, you know, and you expect people to say, ah, just give me an offer. I don't care if the offer is way less because really I, that's the price I really want, but I price it way too high. You're not going to get the offer because people are going to see a price. Let's see an average unit like yours uh, will sell on the open market assignment for 600000 and you advertise it at 650 or 680, the chances you get calls are not very good, okay? The farther you out from, from the market price, what the market is willing to pay, which is the real value of your unit, um, the farther you out, the less calls you're going to have, and, and eventually you're going to burn out your listing. You're going to tag to someone who, a crazy seller. So <clears throat> you don't want to be a crazy seller, and... What that means, I mean, someone whose prices their unit way too high over market value, then they don't get any offers. Now, a lot of people go, oh, you know, but they should give me an offer. If it's low, I'll look at it. But they're not going to call you because they think of you as a crazy seller and they don't want to bother with you. So that listing is going to burn. Everyone's going to know, oh, that unit, you know, that building, that unit, that guy, is a, that person is a crazy seller. So don't be the crazy seller. Price your property in and around the price that the market is willing to pay for it and you know like you gotta find out what it's worth realistically now if you have unrealistic expectation then your price is going to be too high and then you're going to be the crazy seller or you know basically just not going to get enough calls and people are going to be very cautious about it so you always have to think as a seller my price has to reflect the actual market value most properties in mls sell within you know one or two percent um, of what they're listed for, at least those who actually close. So how to find the market value? Well, you can talk to people like myself and talk to, if you have a real estate agent, friends, see what's going on. And don't forget that when you go on Kijiji, you go, oh, but they're selling for 800000 They're not selling for 800000 They're posted, they're listed for 800000 Who said they sold it for eight hundred? No, they did not. And that's why most of the, you know, half of these listings are fake anyways. Like half of these assignment listings are fake. Like people that come and every time uh, they basically just post some Kijiji and then you call them and you say, oh, that's not actually my listing or I don't have it or I have something else because they never had that listing before, okay? So don't be swayed just because you saw it on Kijiji. Someone's asking, even if they have the unit, uh, one in two chances they don't actually, okay? Even if they do, the price is too crazy and of course, it's just not going to work. That's why all you see a lot of these listings are stuck there for a long time. So price it, price it accordingly and properly, okay? Now, a pricing assignments is a whole other video. That's like a course in that, that's like an advanced course in finance, how to do it, especially assignments because they're so complicated. Resale, as you know, is the lowest price right now on the market. Uh, Pre-construction is the highest price per foot, relatively, uh, on the market, and assignment should be somewhere in the middle. Um, but you know, the market's the market. Assignment at some point becomes resale, so that's pulling the market up but at the same time it's putting a lot of pressure on assignments to bring the price t more towards the resale okay so that's the first thing is to 
pers um, to uh, price your assignments properly. It, it's not an easy task, and there's a lot of is a lot of uh, trial and error there, a lot of experience needed, and all that stuff. And there's a lot of you know, like you got to put your ego aside, your emotions aside. It's got to be realistic, okay? So that's the first thing. The second is the deposit. So, you know, the price of assignment is basically made of the the original price that the original purchaser paid for it. Let's say, let's say they paid 500 for the unit and they offer it for 650. So they paid 500. Let's say they put the 20 percent down. That's 100. That's their deposit. And let's say you agree to buy from them at 650. So 150 is the profit, right? 650 less 500. And they already put 100. So. Ideally, the seller, you would like that 100 deposit in the trust account plus the 150, everything up front. Now, the thing is, a lot of people don't have a quarter million dollars lying around, and if they do, they like to leverage more than to leverage it just to buy a $650,000 unit because that means that that's like a very, very high amount uh, that's well over 30% deposit for the unit. And most people want to do 2080, right? So 80, uh, 20% of 650 is 130. But you want 250, so somewhere in between, uh, that's gotta be. Now you gotta, you gotta, you'd really like to have the deposit at bare, bare minimum, the deposit and the real estate fees uh, collected first. Why? Because in case that the person who bought the assignment from you did not complete the transaction for any reason, at least you have enough money. Uh, you know, if you put the 20% deposit, then you have 20 more percent deposit, so that's 40%. So. You, so you can close on the property if you needed to because you have extra cash suddenly, assuming that you can forfeit those funds, of course, and you can pay your real estate agent um, because they still got to get paid if they did the job and you want to have that funds available. Um, and Okay, so that's ideal. But you got to understand, now that there's a lot of condos coming on the market where they're sold relatively cheap and now they're asking you know they bought them at six or seven hundred dollars a foot and now they're trying to flip them at a thousand bucks a foot the margins are you know forty percent on the original uh on the original so you're looking at two hundred thousand i saw yesterday listing a two hundred forty thousand profit uh, very good for the seller but to assume that someone will have three hundred thousand dollars to give you is ridiculous because if they have the three hundred thousand dollar they're probably going to go for a million dollar property because they leverage their money more because that's the whole thing about real estate Watch this. <laughs> okay. So that's so that's a deposit. You have to ask for deposit enough to cover your costs and to kind of keep you safe. Um, but you also have to understand, and you see it more and more. You have to understand that most people are not going to have two hundred, three hundred, four hundred thousand dollars lying around. If they do, they use it in a different way. They, they want to leverage it. They want to pay. They do not want to pay forty percent for that condo, right? Like they might as well just go and buy a brand new condo and use that 300000 as 20% and leverage it to 1.5 million property. I, I think a lot of people will do that. Okay, the third thing is the presentation. So I see so many assignments posted. There's so much information missing. The presentation sucks. It's just awful. Okay, it's like, why do you give your listing, you know, your hard-earned money, your prize, the jewel of the crown to an agent does a crappy, crappy job, but doesn't even do anything uh, to post a unit. It doesn't look good. The text doesn't make any sense. The information is lacking, missing. No information is there. A lot of they don't even put floor plans on half of these assignments. There's no pictures, no, no description of the building. They go, they find some pictures a developer had, and then they repost them and they put a bit of text in. They, and then they put all these uh, superlative. You know, this is amazing, and da, 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 da. I don't care. Like, if I'm going to go buy your assignment, I already know the building, okay? So I know what I'm going to into. I'm just looking for the right unit for me. I'm looking for the right plan and the right price. That's what the buyer of assignment. They already know which building they want. So you don't have to tell them all about the building. They already know this. Give them all the information they need to make a decision. Shall they um, pursue an offer with you or not? You want to sell this thing? Your price has to be really good. It means reflecting real market value. Um, the deposit you're asking for has to be reasonable and the presentation you're offering is full, complete. You cannot mistake and think if you're a buyer, that presentation you have need to answer all the questions of a buyer. How much you paid for it? What was your deposit structure? What about the incentives? What about the upgrades? What about discounts? Anything like that? Anything out of the ordinary? 
um, what are the when you when is occupancy how much are the interim costs the occupancy costs what about the closing costs are they kept on and on and on all the information must be organized and presented in a very good manner you got to make a good presentation that and I'm not talking about like the colors and the fonts here but all the information is properly and logically organized so someone can come take a quick glance at the listing and say um, I'd like to know more or not okay now you got to understand, the less information you give, then the more you frustrate your potential buyer and you're also going to waste more of your time because instead of doing it one time, they're going to ask you every time and then you have to cut and paste and find the information and maybe that person is looking at a couple of units and yours could be the one they like, but hey, you didn't have the information on time and the other guy did, so they sold before you, now you're stuck again, okay? And the other thing, if you're going to pay an agent their fee, and we absolutely worth our fee, but you know, pick the right one. There's so many agents. Pick the one they will do. They will present you the best way possible. Just like you know, if you need to pick a lawyer, pick one that represents you the best way possible, or accountant does your books the best way possible, or someone that cuts your hair, or your dentist, or any professional you hire, hire the best professional. Not because they're your cousin, because they're gonna do the best job for you. If your cousin or your friend is not that great, say, look, I got a lot of money on the table here. I'd love to use you. Once you get some more information, uh, once you have some more uh, experience, I'll use you. But in the meantime, I'm going to use the expert because there's a lot of money on the table. I've got to make sure it's all working out. Okay? So that's it, my friends. The three most important things, I'm summarizing here this for you. When you sell your assignment, is get the realistic price. If, if it's too high, people are not going to call you or you're going to be labeled as a crazy seller. Uh, your deposit you're asking has to be reasonable because if you're asking too much and you're getting into the 30 some and 40 some percent, uh, to them, of course, yeah, from their perspective, they're not going to go for it, they're going to leverage elsewhere, and your presentation has to be organized, all the information included, everything's got to be good, okay? So this is Yossi, you're looking to buy or sell a condo, home, land, commercial, assignments, of course, give me a shout, I'll do my best to help you, thank you very much, that's it.